Hello friends and welcome to my new video in which I will tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is that karma is sweet. I have always found great resonance in this narrative. This was 12 years ago, during my last year of high school working for a grocery store before moving away and beginning at uni. First note, the area had at least four more grocery stores under the same chain. Having completed my shift, that of the early one, I was returning home when I discovered I had neglected to do some shopping after work. Good for me. I decided to go shopping at another store since another one is en route back home. I head down to the register to pay out after getting what I need. When I arrive, I observe a small line developing and that the cashier girl is working as quickly as she can, trying to call someone over to open a second register. Scene. Here is mid-afternoon. Most people are finishing their work and shopping for groceries before leaving for home. Customers abound in the store and staff shift changes abound as well. Doing her weekly shopping, a woman I know from my own company, referred to as single mom, is at the register with her two children and a lot of groceries. While single mom is trying to arrange her groceries on the counter, she is not having the best time with her younger child on her arm and the other kid dragging on her, wanting to get home. Behind single mom is another woman, a Karen, dressed smart, skirt shirt and a business jacket, and this woman is impatient and obviously does not care for single mom and her problems. Karen starts chewing her off to the cashier. Karen, you have to phone someone to open a second register. I have an important meeting, and this is taking far too long. Cashier, I have called a few times, and someone will arrive when able to open up a... Karen, don't pass me that BS. I have been watching you. It surprises me they even kept you on. You haven't even bothered trying and work so slowly. By now, I can tell the single mother is quite embarrassed about starting a queue and her children creating a scene. I also noticed the cashier surprised by the remarks made by Karen. Second note, apart from the grocery store, I worked part-time as a bouncer doorman in one of the neighborhood bars. Dealing with drunk and or entitled idiots makes handling people like Karen far more controllable. Me, excuse me miss, she did ask someone to come, but right now the store is in rush. Just be patient, everything will work out great. Karen spun around and fixed me with a stare that might melt paint. Karen. How dare you address me in such manner? I am CEO of Boats R U.S. Shipping Company. Thus, I will not put up with anyone speaking that manner. She then looks at me, and we both realize I'm wearing my uniform beneath my unzipped jacket. Get over in that register and do your effing job, Karen said. Me? Listen, I'm not employed by this shop. I work at the other one a few blocks down. Karen. Liss, you show your uniform. Are you trying to slouch off? Get behind the register. I'll have you sacked. One word would be just perfect for your manager. The nice cashier tries to cut in before I can answer these threats. Cashier. Ladies, he doesn't work for us. He works at still another store. Karen. Shut the F.I. up. I'm going to get you both sacked for this ineptitude. Her eyes then follow single mother, preparing to pay for her last few items. When Karen realizes her wallet is missing, and without delay, the face of single mother drains of all color goes into overdrive. Karen, are you effing jokes? All that waiting for you to not even have your wallet with those whiny brats for? This is unacceptable. I insist on talking with the manager. Finished here, you two. Pointing a finger in my face and at the cashier, R, pointing at single mother and her children. Get your effing kids and leave. I advise you to do your shopping elsewhere and get rid of your children there as well. You obviously are not suited to be a mother. I nearly lost it right here. From our own business, I knew a single mother who is a devoted customer of our chain of stores. Although her children are quite friendly and polite, like everyone else in life, they can also have a bad day. My blood started to boil seeing her beginning to cry. Hey! Hey! And that's about as far as I could reach when from behind me, an unidentified stranger calls out. Walking past me with a carton of milk and a loaf of bread, this man heads up to single mom and the register. Stranger. You lost your wallet someplace, miss. SM. I have to have dropped it upon receiving my kindergarten children. I am very sorry for this. Stranger. Don't worry, miss. I'll pay for your stuff, he said, smiling kindly. Karen is not done. I can tell she is fuming at this man, even though she is truly speechless at this point. Karen asks, who the heck do you think you are? 
You just cut the line and... Stranger says, Enough. I have been standing here seeing you treat these people like dirt. You should definitely change your behavior, especially in public. Karen, excuse me. How dare you treat me in such manner? Since it is none of your business, you should have just shut up and stayed out of this. I felt guilty for the nice man who was quite courteous about it all and helped out single mother. Karen was going to get worked over by him for this, but to my astonishment, he was rather cool and even beginning to smile. Then he handed her a business card silently. Slightly perplexed about it, she embraced it and gave it some quick study. Her face went white and she dropped her groceries on the floor. Her eyes opened like plates, fast moving from the card to the man. Stranger. You see, you should look for work elsewhere and pack your office. Karen had recently began working for Boats R.U.S. Shipping Company. She was a secretary, not the CEO. But the man owned and chaired the board of Boats R.U.S. Indeed, a little case of he done work here and instant karma. I shall keep that story with me until my death. Edit. Most of the full-time staff members know each other. Same grocery store. That is, same name, brand. Although it would be a little e to do so, the uniform was the same, thus it wouldn't be the end of the world. Still, her actions did not call for such friendliness from me. A little humorous as well would have been calling the cops. It is striking how an unknown, well-meaning man has intervened, accidentally becoming a spectator to Karen's aggression and her deserved response. His mysterious status as the owner of the company where Karen works, the revelation of her true character and her dismissal create a spectacular karma scenario. The next story is Stupid HOA. My house had always been my haven, a quiet haven on the outskirts of the neighborhood away from the bustle of the town, and most importantly, free from the outrageous rules of the homeowners association that tormented the nearby houses. Not part of their HOA, never signed any agreements, and not intending to do so. My house was an independent plot, and I prized my freedom like gold. I first started hearing neighbors whisper just a few months ago. All members of the HOA, people on my street seemed to be staring at my house lately. They would peep curiously at the stone wall I had built years ago for privacy and aesthetics around my backyard. Made of stacked stones, my wall was a solid beauty that accentuated my house. One day I was working on my garden when I noticed several HOA board members standing across the street pointing at my wall and snapping pictures. Alert, I walked over to ask what they were doing. They said they were simply appreciating my land, but something about their smiles bothered me. I dismissed it for the moment, wondering whether they might be bored with their two controlled fences and lawns. Two weeks later, I got a letter in the mail. It came from the HOA, not from the county, the city, or anyone who really counted. The letter said that since my stone wall looked like a fence and fences were expressly forbidden inside the HOA, it broke their community rules. I started laughing loudly. Not even a part of their HOA, my wall was most certainly not a fence. Presumably, though, they had decided it was their business anyway. I called the HOA president, Bill, a man with the attitude of someone who enjoyed power just a little too much, thinking it was just a misinterpretation. I gently said that my property wasn't under HOA rules and that I wasn't a member of their organization. Dismissive, he said they would have to discuss it at their next meeting. A few days later, I returned home to find something that made my tummy turn over. My wall had half been destroyed, smashed to rubble. Furious boiling in my chest, I hurried from my car. There was no accident-related damage here. It was intentional. Two HOA board members were standing smugly next to the trash pile, grinning as though they had just finished some sort of twisted game. They asserted they had come to enforce the community standards and taken down the illegal fence. My blood was heating. For what felt like hours, I argued with them telling them I wasn't part of their ridiculous HOA and they had no right to touch my property. But they were unconcerned. They claimed the HOA decided my wall resembled a fence and fell under their purview. They were absolutely sure they possessed all the authority. I reported police right away, but the officials advised me it was a civil matter. So, resolved to strike them where it hurt, I visited my attorney. Their actions went beyond simple grudging. They were property destruction. When my attorney, an old friend focused in property conflicts, saw the case, he smiled. Technically, it was a gold mine. I compiled every bit of data I could over the following few weeks. 
The pictures the HOA captured, the letter they sent, even neighbor witness accounts of board members, hammers and crowbars tearing down my wall. And then the true twist emerged. Investigating the HOA's activities, I discovered something significant. Half of the neighborhood's homes were not even under the correct authority to follow their policies. Turns out, they had been coercing non-HOA members into compliance for years under false pretenses of more authority than they really possessed. Their jurisdiction limited the properties, thus mine most certainly wasn't one of them. Equipped with this knowledge, my attorney assisted me in submitting a lawsuit covering harassment, trespassing, and illegal property destruction in addition to damage to my wall. The lawsuit was large. And as it happened, several other homeowners were eager to participate once they discovered they had also been misled by the overreach of the HOA. The lawsuit arrived at the HOA like a goods train. The evidence was overwhelming, even if the arrogant President Bill tried to minimize the whole thing. Ultimately, the HOA had to pay for both a large sum in damages and the complete restoration of my wall. Every homeowner they had wrongfully harassed over the years had to also accept public apologies from them. Still, the best thing about it is, the illegal activities of the HOA were revealed so completely that several board members were compelled to step down and the HOA was disbanded. Now the area is quieter, and I have my wall back, taller than it has ever been. Bill left in disgrace. My house still is free, as it ought to be. And with HOA, crushed under the weight of its own conceit, it is simply a memory. The next story is, My Neighbor Steals My Cat and Lies to Me. Me, me father, super dad, animal lover of all kinds. GS, good son, my son loves cats. CK, cute kitten, victim. MF, mother of family, consists in EM, cat thief, entitled mom. MD, mother, F, dad, felon, moron, just part of the story, has no lines. EK, entitled daughter and son, quite interchangeable. EG, enabler, grandma, entitled, first, the background. My family and I used to live in a house in a terrible area, but we were fortunately next to the very sweet cat lady. And the reason one of the most beautiful, incredible kittens entered our life, CK. Being half Maine Coon, CK exhibits all the traits and personality without being twice the size of any other cat. That was around 12 months ago, and when we discovered CK in our tree, she was just a little young to have been weaned. Like a much older child, my then six-year-old son, GS, fell in love with CK right away and helped to clean CK of all her fleas and such. He also fed and slept with CK. We moved from there into a much better neighborhood about seven months ago, with only one setback. Soon we discovered that the family across the street, MF, were manufacturers and dealers of illegal drugs. Not gangster or anything, but lots of traffic. Still, we signed a lease, so we had a year. The now full-grown CK vanishes after the first few weeks. We searched, GK assisted us in our search, the EK assisted also. Nothing until roughly two weeks later. I was sitting on the porch when I saw the cat emerge from the door across the street. Though whatever, CK is back. I thought it strange. Nothing else until roughly May. CK is pregnant by some local Tom before she vanishes once more. We resume the search and everyone is once more contributing. Not a trace. Nothing at all. By now, GS and the EK were friends and frequent hangouts. Everyone was thrilled about the new kitties after they had all visited each other's homes and EK played with CK. Hence, they knew CK and we are rather familiar with her. About three weeks into the CK missing, EKs abruptly mentioned that their cat had returned soon after CK vanished. Hmm, I believe. I then ask EM if she has seen CK. No. Why would you think your cat is our cat? Not exactly what I asked, but I am not looking at a meth house. CK is sitting on our front porch the next day. She has her kittens two days later. GS is thrilled. Everyone else is EK driven. All is pardon. Bygones and all. June rolls around. MD is in jail after being discovered with all but two illegal drugs deemed a full-blown lab. EM is caught strung out so badly she was unresponsive. The EK stayed at our house a few nights to guard them. They return to MF house and the CK vanishes once more. This time, I remove the gloves, cross the street, demand the cat back now. EM closes the door, but EK shows up about one hour later with CK, who runs in right away to feed her kittens. Now, to tell the real story. Last Monday, I go to call in CK for the evening, and she doesn't show up. It was late. Thus, the following day, I ask EG first whether she has seen my cat. She smiles and said, No, sorry. 
However, I saw one a few streets over. It had been hit by a car. She actually lives next door to MF. I called EK. They swore they knew nothing, but CK's now older kittens were alone in the tree next door. I go investigate where EG mentioned the city had done street sweeping, etc. the night before. Actually, I looked over the whole neighborhood. Oh, crud, I said in rather less pleasing language. How do I tell GS that situation? Many pints were thrown, many tears shed as we sat down on the porch with our whole family, brought out ice cream, and delivered the news. One week passes, Marilyn spends several years behind bars. EM misses a meeting with her counselor on prohibited substances. They come to conduct a CPS check, and she is then directed to do 90 days of inpatient rehabilitation, starting within 30 days. As soon as she checks in, the children will be sent to EG's. Their landlord promptly evicts them all. To sell off as much as she can, including all of EK's stuff, the EM sets out a multi-day yard sale. Sunday is the EK visit day. Inside cooking, I can hear them chatting. EK tells GS, guess what? Our kitten was returned and she will produce kittens. Leaning out front, the small house's kitchen, I say, hey, EK, what kitten? They start to disperse right away. I finish cooking, eat, then walk across to MF house. I haven't said anything when EM on the front lawn sees CK come out and settle on the grass. I look up and EM yells, that's not your F at hash dollaring cat? Exactly. Not skipping a beat, I approach the cat, feel her head. About a month before, CK had been in a knockdown drag out fight. She had two scar bumps on her head and a long scar healing on her lip. Sure enough, all three are present. The one on her lip is infected. CK begins to head towards our house, sees her cat, and starts running. Yeah, EM, that is GSS cat. You know it is. I know it is. As EK approaches, I stroll up and grab CK. Don't do that! You're scaring him. I grab CK and turn to EK. Few things. One, she is a she. Two, you visited our house. This is CK. Three, EM steals from her constantly. Thinking it was over, I turned then and headed for my house. Now comes EG. What is going on here? EG yelled. Tears streaming down GS's face. I called over GS and said, CK, you're alive he said while sprinting into our house. I then turned to EG, seeing so much red, it could have been a deep shade of crimson. Your cracked head daughter stole GSS cats again. Then you told me about CK. I was so done, I didn't care. Red-faced GS now. That's EK cat. We acquired him for them a year ago, and he vanished almost a year ago. Where did you supposedly find CK? Listen attentively. She is CK. CK wasn't born even one year ago. We came here from previous town seven months ago with CK. You have seen her. EK has performed in our house during EM's away, so don't give me this. EG was not wavering. EKs were never over at your house. I had them at my house the whole time. Blushing. And that is EK's cat. I'll show you pictures. You showed me pictures and pulled out her PHH me. All dated from the time CK had been missing before. Sure, those are all obviously of CK. She squinted at her phone. Look at this one from last summer, grinned, and showed me a cat picture. As I mentioned, CK has dark, almost black and dark brown stripes, and is half Maine Coon. Which cat in the image is this one? Was tan, light tan, brown. You break GS's heart, telling us about CK, while EM lures the cat in with treats. If I have to come and get CK again, I will get a restraining order. Those aren't the same cats. BS is it. She now stood holier, thou. What are you going to do? Tell the police someone is feeding and treating your cat nicely. I was merely plain annoyed now. Hot, standing in the middle of the road and ready to enter CK home. You think you are so religious? How about this? Thou shalt not bear false witnesses, or better, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, cattle, or possessions. I turned, then began to leave. You are breaking EK's heart now, she yelled at my back suddenly. Your daughter stole our cat, repeatedly. EK's heart was broken by you telling her CK was her cat. We're done. I'm going inside, super glue her collar shut, and get her a crate for her and her kittens. EG said smugly, real adult, just locking an outdoor cat away. No real adult would not be forcing your neighbors to hide their cat, so stealing it. Real adults wouldn't tell their neighbors their animals passed away. I turned to go, EG gulping like a goldfish. 
It's over right now, too. Oh, no. Again, I had to flee CK and put medicine on her lip. The regular police knock came from my door as I was getting everyone in bed. Opening it, I said, Yes, officer? Grasping behind him EM and EG, he sighed, This lady, say you stole their cat. Could you understand his holding up of a picture of the brown and tan cat? This is my cat, I said to him as I watched CK lying on the rug playing with her kittens. Yeah, this cat isn't here, the officer said after a few glances between CK and the photo. Before you go, EM is a known dealer. Her husband just went to prison and she had her kids taken away. You may want to consider a more reputable source in the future. Again sighing, the cop said, I'm just here for the cat, who clearly isn't here, if you'll excuse me. I have to have a chat with EM and EG. I closed and locked the door. Since then, I have closed all the windows and doors. GS is quite careful not to let the cats out. At first, you move to a better neighborhood, full of hope for a better future for your family and your pets. However, your well-intentioned efforts to hide your pets from your dishonest neighbors are met with new difficulties and a struggle to get your beloved cat and her babies back home. The story demonstrates your courage and determination in a conflict situation when you are faced with the task of restoring truth and justice. Your reaction to the accusation of stealing your pet and your interaction with the police officer is impressive in its responsibility and restraint. It was extremely difficult for you to see your son suffering when he learned of the tragedy with his pet. But still, we see that we have a happy ending here. Your pet has returned to your family and is doing well. Even after a difficult ordeal, you remain strong and determined. I wish you and your family peace and prosperity, and I wish your cat a safe and joyful return home. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, comment. See you soon.